So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Olof Schingren. I will talk about Edelweiss. Olof is uh, kind of like the snowman in Frogs, but we still spelled uh, a bit differently <laughs> with an O instead of an A. So, my day job, I'm working as a digital design engineer for a company called Camcom. We did a lot of interesting stuff. I suggest checking out the QR code to learn more. Uh, I'm also involved with open source silicon uh, since a long time uh, as an advocate, um, co-founder and director of Foster Foundation, involved with a startup called Shipflow. Also been helping out on a, a massive open uh, computer architecture core course called RVFPGA. I'm a RISC-V ambassador and I was once called an extraordinary individual uh, <laughs> by the ship's lines. Uh, and I'm also the developer. I have too many open source projects. Uh, not all of them give or getting enough love. We'll touch upon a few of these uh, in this talk. So, uh, this talk about the Edelice, but in order to talk about Edelice, I think we need to talk about FUSOC as well. Uh, so, FUSOC is a package manager uh, for uh, HDL designs, uh, primarily Verilog and VHDL designs, but it works with other uh, languages as well. Uh, so package manager you know, collects stuff from different places and, and, and figure out dependencies and things. But in order to actually do something with the RTL code, we need also to send them to EDA tools. So we need uh, EDA tool interfacing code. Uh, and some time ago, I realized, so this is the, this is the part that is actually the, uh, uh, interfacing the, R, the uh, EDA tools. And it turns out that this is something that a lot of projects need. Like all the new HDL languages that come out uh, need some way, at some point, to interface with EDA tools. And it's, it's a bit of a finicky thing to do, uh, especially if you support a lot of EDA tools. So I decided to split this out into its own project. Uh, and so this became Edelice. And when I did that, I also realized that I would like to have a, a format, like, like, a, like a standard for how to transfer the design information from Edelice, from FUSOC to Edelice. So I created the EDAM format for that. So EDAM format stands for EDA metadata. So you basically feed an EDAM file or the EDAM description to Edelice and you will get happiness out of this, or at least you will get uh, like FBJ Bitstream or a simulation model or something. So uh, I also tried, when I started this format, I also reached out to all other projects that I knew about who were kind of might be interested, uh, see if they would like to collaborate, because I think it's better to collaborate on these kind of things. The only response I got was someone saying, hmm, we should have an open source VHDL parser, which was kind of not, of, not what I was thinking about. Uh, so I went and, and, and implemented this myself. Now, afterward, people have picked up this. There are several projects who are using uh, Edelice for, for their uh, uh, tool interfacing. So the EDM format uh, contains a lot of information about the design that the EDA tools need. And if we look a bit closer, uh, Edelice has three stages, as I call them. It's configure, build and run. Configure, it takes your EDM description and transform that into the EDA tool specific setup. And it could be like command line instructions, or it could be creating a Vivado project, or it could be creating tickle scripts that, uh, that are uh, for, for any pro specific tool. Uh, the build stage then transformed this into some kind of artifact. And I mean, uh, we'll see soon, Edelice supports a lot of different tools. I mean, if it's a simulation, then you will get a simulation out of the build stage. And if it's a FPGA flow, then you will have a FPGA bitstream, for example. And finally, we have the run stage, and that also means different things in different flows. For, for an FPGA flow, it's typically that you upload the uh, image to a um, board for a simulation, it's running a simulation, and for formal verification tool, it's, it's an op. It basically doesn't do anything. And it's coarse-grained, and that's by design, uh, because we support a lot of different tools, and it's hard to find like a common denominator. So uh, we just say that there's this single step called build, but then the backends are free to uh, implement their own sub-steps. For example, if you have an FPGA flow, you can tell it to only do synthesis and, and stop after that. So uh, I think there's about 40 different EDA tools supported by Edelice. Uh, many of them, these tools I don't use myself. Uh, so there's <laughs> a lot of contributors. I think it was 76 different people who have contributed to Edelice when I looked last. And this has worked very well. 
uh, with each backend being like a monolithic thing. Uh, but then if we look at more advanced flows, like if you would do gate level simulation, then you would do first a synthesis and maybe even place and route, and then you would do a simulation flow. And you can't easily stack these flows uh, after one another. So I, uh, two years ago, we started a new kind of API. This is, we call this is tool API, and started with something called the flow API, uh, which tries to do this more structured. So start by each tool is now a separate class. Each tool support is, is a separate class. It will input, get an EDM as an input. It will get, produce an EDM as an output. And this is true for all the tools. And uh, it will then transform this EDM. Uh, so for example, if we have Yosis up there, I don't think you can see this, but it gets a lot of very long files as input, also a PCF file and a file which is uh, of the type user, which means don't touch, basically. Uh, and it will produce another EDAM, which has consumed all the Verilog files and instead uh, outputs a JSON netlist file in this, in this case. And same for NextPNR, it will take this JSON netlist as an input file and the PCF file, and it will consume those two files and leave the user type file and, and produce a uh, rooted design file, and so on. SV2V, for example, eats all the system Verilog files, spits out the Verilog file. And once we have that, or another example, IPExact, for example, you can have an IP exact uh, tool that just converts all this IP exact description into a top le level Verilog file, for example. So once we have this, uh, we go to the next uh, stage, which is uh, the flows. Uh, so you flows is basically just a programmatic way to, to combine all these tools. Uh, so the, the flow classes in, in Idlash are typically pretty small. They just basically tell how to connect all these things together. Uh, and I will look at more advanced flows later. So this is typical flow. Synthesis, place and route, and then timing and, and, and bitstream generation in parallel. Uh, and then we want to execute. So this is a kind of a graph also, like directed graph. And uh, we, we want to execute this directed graph. And typically, you tell Idealize will give you a make file. Uh, and then you just make, and you will uh, rerun this as, as needed. If any input has changed, it will uh, figure that out uh, because we have tracking, we track all the input source files also. So it's deterministic and, and doesn't uh, rebuild unnecessarily. But we also separate this, this flow, ex flow graph execution. We have uh, split that out to its own class uh, system also. So the idea is then, we're not there yet, but the idea is then that you might just well produce a linear file, which kind of does the same thing as a make file. Another way to just execute things. Or you can have this running a Slurm uh, system, or create build, uh, basal build rules, for example, or I don't see GitHub actions. Create all the, the YAML files for GitHub actions, or GG, which is a novel uh, like build system I learned about a while ago. So the idea is that we should have different classes for all these things. Uh, so that is one of the things we can do now that we have like a structure, we have tools and we have flows and we have this uh, so clearly separated. Uh, also, having, having a structured approach to this allows us to do different things. For example, we can uh, add CocoTB to any of the support simulators by just adding like a CocoTB node in front of it. Uh, we can switch out so we can do synthesis uh, using uh, Yosis or Vivado synthesis, for example. Uh, and we can add frontend, so we can have a GHDL frontend that, that turns all our VHDL into Verilog, or a Shorelog or SV2V frontend for, for lowering to, to Verilog, from system Verilog. Each of these uh, components can also optionally be run uh, in a Docker container. Uh, this is pretty nice. I, typically, NextPNR gets very angry when I update my, my boost uh, libraries, so then I just instead ask it to run from a Docker image, uh, and I can just run that. Uh, and as I said before, gate level simulation. So we can take any synthesis tool that is supported and feed the results into any simulation tool that is supported. So it's kind of more advanced flows, and you can do pretty much whatever you want. Uh, so for the future, I really like with the EDAM everywhere. I, I would love to have EDAM support uh, directly in the EDA tools. That would be really cool. 
uh, I would like to have it, um, I would like to have a bridge to Silicon Compiler, for example. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I want to have all the people doing their own HDL languages um, uh, using Idealize so we can, <laughs> can share the burden of this. Uh, and at some point, I would really love to have good documentation. And I know this is a very, very ambitious goal. So I have actually decided to lower the ambition a bit and just uh, <laughs> change the target. Um, so I think this is more achievable. <laughs> and uh, with that, I say thank you. Nice one. Um, I, I'm guilty of working in companies where we've always just spun our own flow. And I know we shouldn't. And I know we should probably all converge around some sort of shared flow. We, we all share the components, right? Like make or tickle or something. Um, I think the work that's gone on on, you know, Fuse Sock and now EDA Lies over the years is fantastic. Um, how much uptake do you see in commercial companies? Do you, do you get contacted much from folks who say, yeah, we got rid of our make you know, mess and we're now we're using this? Yeah, I, so this is something I've been actually meaning to find out. I mean, I'm going to ask, ask openly on, on LinkedIn or something and see how much people actually use Fusec. Because I do see a lot of support requests from, from uh, uh, companies, some of them wanting to pay for support and some of them uh, not wanting to pay for support. But that's how it is. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I see, I see it everywhere. Uh, and I think, I know OpenTitan is, is, a, is a Fusoc user and through that I have seen also people coming in more. Yeah, cool. And uh, apart from organic homegrown um, spaghetti make files, what other alternatives are there to like a proper build system that's maintained and provided by an external provider? I, I don't know of many myself. We have, uh, I mean, Silicon Compiler uh, for, uh, for part of this. Uh, so Silicon Compiler, I would say, covers Edelice and a bit of Fusoc. So it's, it's not a, like a clear. Uh, and we have uh, HDL Make, which is kind of, I guess, not that uh, maintained anymore. Uh, we have uh, mFlowgen. We have Hammer on this, Berkeley. This is all in the open source domain, though. Yeah. I'm wondering more about like proprietary closed source. Pay us money, we'll solve so, all your problems so, for you. Yeah, so one of the reasons why I started Fusoc originally was that every company I had been working at invented this by themselves. Yeah. And there was always some guy in the basement who uh, <laughs> did this originally and, and they, uh, no one knows no one know who it was. Or if they didn't know who it was, it been either promoted to senior management that doesn't have time or they left the company. So, I mean, how, how many here have used Fusoc or Realize? Yeah, like half. How many have switched their like internal flow, like their day-to-day -day Daily driver to fuse sock and EDA lies. Yeah, so it's. I've definitely used it, but we. I don't want to go down the path of porting all of our. <laughs> no one stuff. does. Stuff. <laughs> do, do, do it before you start a project instead. Sorry. Do it. do it before you start a project instead. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. So, yeah. So uh, I tried the the flows of uh, the, the new flows feature uh, about a, a year ago when it was kind of first announced, um, and I couldn't I couldn't get it working. Has there been a lot of progress in the past year of debugging that? Yeah, it has been. Uh, it was quite new a year ago, uh, and we have, I think, it's pretty stable now. There's a few things that we'd like to have improved, but yeah. So I think you mentioned for Fusoc you have some support for new HDLs. And one of my sort of ideas as a new HDL builder is that we should we have a lot of different cool HDLs that do different things well. So it would be really nice to have a, a system that can integrate these HDLs. Do you think Fusoc is a good way to do that or Yes and no. I think for for, for uh, I would I put it like this, for uh, um for a design that is primarily uh, traditional HDL based, like Verilog or VHDL, I think Fusic is a good uh, way to do it. And then you just use generators to, to put in, to add in the, the extra IP from other languages. 
But I mean, if, if your design is primarily speed-based, for example, then you already probably have a good package manager in your language. And same goes to Chisel uh, or, or other languages like Amaranth. Uh, but so, so in that case, I don't think you actually need Fuser, but you still probably could benefit from Edelize. Um, you mentioned having support for CocoDB, and one of the things that was interesting to me about that is that CocoDB is one, something that you can use to test your whole top level and, and all of that, but each of my individual cores may also have CocoDB and may have a million different tests that depend on different components. Uh, and beyond that, CocoDB has traditionally wanted to take over your make file entirely. Um, and so I'm curious how the, the, the trend of taking over your makefile entirely is basically what every tool does, right? Uh, and so I'm curious, how does, um, how does uh, Edelize work with that? How does Edelize solve the problem of, I have lots of test branches, not just uh, my top level? Well, uh, two things. First, the thing about taking over your, your makefile. This is something that's true for a lot of projects. So what I typically do is that I dig down deep into deep generated scripts and stuff and figure out what does it actually do. Uh, and one other example is open lane, for example. Now we have an open lane backend, but ideally I would like to use Yosis, and then I would like, so I can switch out all the components, but now it's just a monolithic flow. And CocoDB used to be a monolithic flow where you had a, had a make file, but actually what, the only thing you do basically is that you add uh, a .so file to your command line and add like a few switches and, and then, then give it a Python file and then you go. So I mean, it's, that, that's what the only thing you need to do. For, ex for executing a lot of different test benches, that it has been, I would say that has, there's not a good solution for that within Edelize yet, as I've never been. Um, I know there are other projects like DVSIM, which I know too little about, but I know that OpenTitan, I think, is using DVSIM and, and maybe Fusok as a front end and then into DVSIM. I'm not sure exactly how, how this works, but uh, yeah. Uh, Hugo probably can tell you more about that. So that, that could be an alternative for, for launching. And I would like to, f to feed these projects into together somehow. Uh. Cool, all right, well it's great to see the progress on this, Olaf. Thanks for the update. Cheers, mate. <laughs>